this screencast is going to talk about least common multiples and greatest common factor word problems and how you would differentiate or pick between the two when you're trying to solve certain word problems. So the key question that we're focusing on in this video is how do I know when to use LCM, which stands for least common multiple, or GCF, greatest common factor, to solve word problems. So there are a few things that we want to talk about in terms of each. So I made a T-chart. So you want to make sure that you're filling this out as I fill this out, just to make it a little bit more easy to solve some of the word problems as we move forward. So the first example is um, for least common multiple, and we're just going to fill out that side first, and then we'll move over to greatest common factor. So there are a few things that you want to look for, some keywords or key phrases in each type of word problem. And starting off with least common multiple, we want to look for repetition. So if something's repeating itself, or two things, or three things are repeating itself, that most of the time means that we're going to be looking at using multiples to solve that problem. Another thing we want to look at is if something is cycling, which is very similar to repetition. We also want to see if the problem mentions something or two or more things happening at the same time. And looking for that word again, so happening at the same time again. And then some obvious language when we think of least common multiple would be looking for the word smallest or least would be key indicators that you're using least common multiple in order to solve the word problem. Moving over to greatest common factors, because we're looking at factors, if we think back to using the nines method, we're using the um, process of division. Division is splitting things up. So the first thing that we want to look for is if we're grouping things or splitting, or dividing things equally. Keyword here is equally. We're also going to see if we're sharing anything. Okay, Sharing would be really important if we're using GCF. We want to look for maybe the keyword no leftovers, because we're sharing things equally. And then finally, if we think about the phrasing of greatest common factor, we might also see some of the words such as greatest or largest, and those would also be key phrases or words that we would use in order to identify that we're using factors to solve a word problem. So make sure you get those written down because it's going to be really important. Let's go ahead and take a look now at an example. So if we read this example, it says Jack and Joe love when the school cafeteria serves chicken nuggets and french fries on the same day. Chicken nuggets are served every five days and french fries are served every three days. If both chicken nuggets and french fries are served today, when will they be served together again? So if we take a look, we have to pick between GCF or LCM. So if we look at some key words or key phrases in here, I notice that chicken nuggets are served every five days and french fries are served every three days. This tells me that I'm looking at a cycle or I'm looking at a pattern. And then it also says something about being served together again. So we're looking for that repetition. So that means that I'm going to be using LCM or least common multiples in order to figure out when both french fries and chicken nuggets will be served together again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to list out the multiples for the number five and for the number three, and I'm going to find the smallest number that they have in common. So let's go ahead and do that now. Notice that once again, I followed my rule of listing about three to five or five to seven multiples for each number, and then I'm going to go through and compare. When I go through and compare, I see that, oh, I have a 15 in both of my lists. Because I have a 15 in both of my lists, that tells me that my answer for this would be 15 days. So after 15 days, both chicken nuggets and french fries will be served together again. One thing we're going to look for is a sentence that answers the question. So make sure you're writing a sentence that might answer the question. So just reword the question into sentence form. Let's take a look at another example. This says, Peter is planning his birthday party. His mom said she would make 18 personal pizzas and 27 cupcakes for the party. How many total people can Peter have at his party so the pizza and cupcakes are shared equally among his friends? How many pizzas and cupcakes will each person receive? So this is actually a two-part question. What we want to look at first is whether or not we're using GCF or LCM. So let's underline some important things. We know that we have 18 pizzas and 27 cupcakes. 
that says how many total people can Peter have at his party so the pizza and cupcakes are shared equally. Because we're seeing those words shared equally, that tells us we're going to use GCF, or greatest common factor. We're going to find the factors of 18 and 27. So I'm going to go ahead and list out 18 and 27 and go through and set up my nines method and then fill that out for 18 and 27. So why don't you go ahead and do the same thing right now. So you'll see that I went through and did my nines method for 18 and 27. Now I'm going to go through and compare my list. So I see I have a 1 in common, I have a 3 in common, and I have a 9 in common. So because I'm using GCF, or greatest common factor, that tells me it says shared equally. So how many total people? So he can invite 9 people to his party. That's the first part. Then we have to look at the second part. How many pizzas and cupcakes will each person receive? Well, if we're inviting nine people, we have to look at the number 18. So we have to do 18 divided by nine people, and that would be two pizzas. And then we do the same exact thing for the number of cupcakes. We have 27 divided by nine is three, so that would be three cupcakes. So this tells me that we can invite nine people and each person would get two pizzas and three cupcakes. Let's go ahead and take a look at two more examples and in these two examples, you guys are gonna actually try and figure out GCF or LCM and then you're going to try and solve them. So we're gonna do it in two parts. We're gonna have you answer, do you think GCF or LCM? Check and then pause again to figure out or to go through the steps to solve the problem and answer the question. So let's go ahead and take a look at our next example. So this example says Mr. Staub has 84 packs of pretzels and 56 juice boxes. He wants to share them equally with all of his students. How many students does Mr. Staub have in his class? How many packs of pretzels and juice boxes will each student receive? So once again, we have a two part question. Part one, part two. So what I want you to do right now is pause the video, reread the problem, and try and figure out whether or not we're using GCF or LCM. Once you think you have an idea, press play again and check my answer. So if you chose GCF, you are correct. And here is why. We see the keyword share and equally with all of his students. And then the fact that it's a two-part question and it says how many packs of pretzels and juice boxes will each student receive tells us once again we're using GCF. So now what you need to do is go through the steps and find the factors of 84 and 56 and then find the GCF. So go ahead and pause the video and hit play to check your answer once you think you have a final answer for both of our questions. So you'll see all my work here. You'll see that my final answer is over here in the box and you should have gotten 28 students and each student will receive three packs of pretzels and two juice boxes. Let's take a look at one more example. Our last example says that Matthew goes hiking every eight days and swimming every six days. He did both kinds of exercise today. How many days from now will he do both hiking and swimming again? So keywords, we wanna look for some keywords. We wanna pick GCF or LCM. So pause, look for your keywords, reread the problem, check your T-chart, and then figure out GCF or LCM. Once you figure it out, hit play, and then go through and solve the problem. If you picked LCM, you're correct, because we see the words every six days and every eight days. And then again, this keyword again, how many days from now will he do both hiking and swimming again? So you're gonna use the numbers eight and six, and you're gonna find the LCM, so you wanna figure out what's my final answer going to be so once you think you figured out the answer, hit play and check your answer with mine. So your answer should be 24 days. So 24 days from now, he will do both hiking and swimming again. So just to wrap up, here's the T-chart again. Repetition, cycle, happen at the same time. Smallest or least are keywords for LCM. For GCF, you have grouping or splitting or dividing equally, sharing things, no leftovers, or looking for the words greatest or largest. So this is how you would figure out the difference between LCM and GCF word problems.